so it has been raining and look what we have discovered uh, we have a leak in the van what i've discovered sorry what grace has discovered so yeah the back window is leaking um so we need to fix that this one seems to be okay and the other ones seem to be okay so let's right, go and let the girls in welcome to week number six hang on there you go a little bit cleaner <clears throat> so actually we haven't done a huge amount of video in the last couple of days mainly because we've done quite a lot of work during the evening but let me show you sorry we have finished the first part of the ceiling and wired up the lights i'll drop in a little video when we tested that late last night okay so we have come up with the genius idea to test <laughs> whether the lights work. Um, so we're gonna try and use the car battery. Uh, oh my gosh, that looks so pretty. Oh, they look so awesome. You've just got so much reflection, but they look amazing. And look, there's light. Hey, wee -wee -wee. Well done, baby. I'm super happy with those. I will do a whole video of how um, we've worked out the ceiling when we do the other side. So let me just show you. that's this bit here. And also how we're wiring the lights. Um, I didn't, vid mainly because we really wanted to make sure that one, we did it right in the first place. Um, and also a lot of the time it was really late at night. So lighting is absolute pants. But today this has arrived and this is going on here to finish this section so i'm just going to neaten this up and make it a little bit more flush and then add the trim to uh, get that sorted So I've done a rough, put it on, and I really mean rough, let me show you. Uh, so you can see that it's on, but the vinyl needs to be cut a little bit more because it's pushing it up like this. And we need to cut it around this side, but of course there's a little bit of metal inside. So actually I need the jigsaw, I'm not sure where Mark's put that. Um, but it's raining at the moment so i've just got it on roughly and that just gives me a little bit of an idea as to uh, what i need to do to tweak it to make sure that it goes on as perfectly as we can do it <clears throat> but so far already that makes a big difference um, and i quite like having that on because it just means that as we're having a little bit of wet weather right now it would just protect everything um, as well we've got ray ray she's just coming into the van how are you? Are you okay? Good. Nice and wet. What are you wearing? Oh dear. We've got it all going on right now. Oh, you can't see Grace. There we go. There's not really much more I can do today. Um, the paint should be arriving for the outside of the van today as well. Obviously, we're not going to be able to do that. And there's a few things that need to happen before that, that can take place. Um, sanding it all down, ready to paint. Um, that's going to be a pretty arduous um but also quite exciting job the biggest challenge i think we're going to have is that on the top of the roof um the people that had the van before were painting um i'm not 100 percent sure what it's called i think we've still got some but it's like a rubber type of consistency to help protect the roof we will paint we'll continue to paint the top of the roof in whatever um, stuff the previous owners were used and then the rest of the van will be the color that we are choosing um, so that was actually going to be a job that was going to be one of the last jobs painting the or repainting the color of the van wasn't a priority really however we know that the weather's going to change very soon it's already turning so going from hot sunny dry weather 
to it being a bit cooler, there being a little bit more rain. Um, and as we're in the UK, we know that we are going to expect lots more rain. So <clears throat> we want to try and make the most of the weather before it turns um, and becomes a, a lot more unpredictable. So that job has been brought forward. I also have a surprise that I have not told the rest of the family, including Mark. And that's also to help the outside of the look of the van. So you'll have to wait and see what that bit is. Apart from that, there's not really a huge amount that I can do <clears throat> today. There's a few more areas of our spaceship mode. <laughs> and by spaceship mode, barrier. Um, so there's a few areas that um, there's one. You might be able to see it. Let me just see if I can. Uh, it's just about there. Um, that needs to be resealed so that part I can do apart from that there's not a huge amount that I can crack on with today we need to map out the entire van and when I say the entire van I mean not just where the kitchen and the shower and the seating area is going it's a case of where also the plumbing is going the electrical the uh, piping for the Truma heater um, where all that's going and also the electric point the usb um where the three point plug uh, sockets are going to go where the kitchen cupboards are going the overhead ones where other overhead cupboards are going so all of that we need to map out because it will just help us to then know where we can hide wiring so for example obviously we've got the lights up here um, and this lighting fixture here um, is going to be hidden behind um, the wall area. The one that is up here, so you can see the conduit that's coming out, that's that black one there, um, that's going to be hidden behind um, kitchen cupboards. So that will run inside of that. Um, the ones down the bottom, you probably might not be able to visualise this just yet, but this is where all the batteries are going and also where the Truma heater or combi boiler, which is um, just on top of the gas box there, um, that would be housed down there, which means that some of the heating pipes will run um, over the wheel arch and come out to roughly around about this area here which is where it's likely we will have a almost like a shoe rack at the end of the cupboard and at the bottom of it is where one of the heat outlets will be and that just means that we've got heat coming in this direction it will also help to um dry out any of the shoes because obviously the heat will rise um we're also going to have one of the heat outlets into the bathroom and that's because the shower area or uh, the shower in a toilet area is also going to be like a mini drying room as well that would just be things coats um maybe shoes uh wetsuits um a lot of the things maybe even smalls you know want to think about winter in winter we've got four children we have a dog it's going to be wet it's going to be muddy it's going to be messy um and it's a very small space so we need places to be able to dry the essential things hats gloves coats scarves um place to put boots um all of that type of stuff and so that's the process that we're trying to map out we're planning everything for winter because after that summer becomes a little bit of a breeze the biggest challenge that you have more so with summer is how to keep the van cool and that's not even so much for us even though that's um, a luxury it's more for Rue, uh, making sure that it's not too hot for him um, but things like air conditioning, if we do decide to put that on, especially if we're going to travel Europe, um, that can be added afterwards. It doesn't need to be done now, but it does help if you plan for that now so that if you do add it, it becomes easier. So it's just those things. That's, that's, in fact, I'm going to say that's probably the biggest thing that we've been doing at the moment is the amount of research that takes a lot of time on how to do everything i am so incredibly thankful to other youtubers um a big shout out to uh, louise and emily from camper vibe watched a lot of their videos and got a lot of inspiration from them greg virgo oh my gosh could not have done half the stuff that we've got uh without his videos they are extremely thorough 
um very well explained so a massive shout out to him as well i'll link all of them in the description below um they're probably the two biggest ones that we have watched consistently when it comes to the van build um and then there are huge other people um that we use as inspiration for places to visit later on uh but that would be another video so a lot of the time at the moment it's research it's looking and everything takes so much longer and everything that you want to be able to do when you've got a spare five minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes an hour or two you think oh i just crack on and do this but you can't because you need to do another aspect like for example um when it came to um re we, we couldn't put the insulation and the vapor barrier back on until we had the conduit in place for all of the electrics we couldn't put the conduit in place until we knew exactly where the electric points needed to be positioned and we couldn't know where the electric points were going to be positioned and until we knew where the bathroom was going to be for the toilet for example or in a fan um where the kitchen was going to be where the children were going to sit and where their studying areas are going to be their school areas for things like charging uh laptops um ipads um i've said this before i know it's not something that everyone's going to have in their van but it's a printer and a laminator we're homeschooling four kids trust me i know we're going to need that they will probably only use those when we're on when we're on main hookup but it has to be considered where are you going to do that you want a table area so it's where are those sockets going to be in the, in this area which i'm sat in right now and also where are they going to be in the back where are the lights going to go um and i'll tell you we made a mistake actually we made a mistake with the lights i'm just going to show you so the lights are up here and originally these sets of lights let me see if i can get my finger in the shot these sets of lights that you can see here um they were actually further over they were over here and then i suddenly had the realization that actually we've got overhead cupboards going here <laughs> uh, so we moved the beam um or the cladding over that had those ones this side uh not so much there's not going to be overhead um cupboard here because mark would bang his head as he walked in but what i probably will do is put like one of those wire basket um they're not a basket but one of those wire things that you can you know shove things into um such a succinct explanation on that one wasn't there hopefully you know what i mean maybe i'll drop in a picture um so when you're working everything out it's all of those types of things that you're considering and where everything needs to go and how that's going to be and making sure there's enough spacing uh for example behind the shower there needs to be enough space to run one of the pipes for the heating so that's probably our biggest learning curve is the fact that there is so many different things to think about and so many different parts of the layout depend on another aspect of the build um, and in a van of course nothing is straight there's no squares there's like n none of that um, and of course it's a small space so you want to be thinking about the livability why do you need the heating in a particular area um, how are you going to have the water running and where's that going to go all this type of stuff I don't need to tell you but um yeah that's predominantly what we've been doing right i've been waffling on way too long now i'm sure that you are much more interested in what we're actually doing as far as the build is concerned um so let's drop into that now Mark is just having a look underneath the trim to see what that's like and actually that's a lot better than we thought it was going to be and there are foam sections in between the connections um, so clearly no water has been getting in so that's really positive. I'm just about to mix the paint 
um, <clears throat> I've got it on here so far but I might have to mix part of that off camera unless I can put the camera somewhere else um, we will see it's getting real <clears throat> so I'm gonna try with a three to one paint solution which means white spirit one of those in this two <clears throat> three of these it doesn't really matter what size you use as long as you don't change the combination throughout the painting um because obviously there's gonna be a number of coats needed so I will probably do it up to this line, which is 0.25 litres, um, <clears throat> technically half a pint. So clearly Mark's found a problem. I'm going to bring the... Um, oh. um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Yeah. Apparently Mark's found something, so let's go. Oh, have a look. What have you found? Oh, right. so that's okay. the back stop, isn't it? So that went on there like that. Mhm. Mm that would have been. That's rusted through. Yeah, slightly. So that was sitting there. Would sit there. What's left of it? And that just would stop. Something like that. And I would stop the back door slamming against there. Okay. But obviously, um. So we need a new one of those, and we most certainly need to. Do we need to weld on a new piece? We like need it. to sort it out, that's for sure. Yeah. So, so <clears> that's <throat> one of the reasons for taking these down is to see. But you see what I mean? Like here, all of the. Oh, you can't really see. All of these have got. Um, like rubber seals behind so originally we we're going to take all of these off and silicone um, them but it might just silicone around them I don't know <clears throat> I will find out from this man what the best thing to do is oh, me. <laughs> oh you're so funny I'm a boy, <laughs> I'm a <real> boy. <laughs> um, cool so I'm gonna leave him doing that you're welcome and we oh, look at the state of me look look stuff everywhere um right we are gonna get on and do this paint so somewhere here i did have a screwdriver to open the tin can with the paint tin You've stolen my screwdriver. <laughs> uh huh. Can I just borrow it to open the tin of paint? Uh -huh. See, we're now getting possessive over tools. Yes, I'm sure. Right, in fact, let me see if I can move you guys. Okay, so I reckon down here is the place to be so three of these one of these first of all i'm going to stir the paint um mix it really well and then we will continue on <laughs> so it is 20 to 10. <laughs> this is what we're doing oh, what mark's now doing i can't reach the top stuff <clears throat> So, hey, I've done a lot. Oh, I'm coming in closer. Oh, but I'm blocking out all the light. Look, you can see. Hello. <laughs> like my humongous arm. <sighs> like some kind of horror movie. Oh, suicidal moth, no! You <laughs> You bug. That's a fucking print, isn't it? There's a grey moth right now. <laughs> <laughs> Got a grey spider and a grey moth. Um, so, this is the first coat, we did a 4 to 1 ratio, um, and there's still quite a lot left, but we've already come across huge issues, so the rollers that we've used 
um, are rubbish. They just leave loads and loads and loads of little dots. Bubbles. Okay, bubbles. Um, and so we've had to go over with a paintbrush. Um, but we're just doing this because we know it's the first coat and so we're going to have to sand it all down and stuff anyway. Uh, but we need to pick something up tomorrow to have a much better finish on the Foam other rollers. coats. Foam rollers. There we go. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to be clearing up all. Um, but bearing in mind, so this, this is a two and a half litre bucket. And that's how much we've still got left. Um, on a four to one ratio. <coughs> and we have done, it's really dark, so I'm not sure how much you're going to be able to see. We've got street lights, but not that. So we've done all this side of the van. Not at the top, but the bonnet and all the way down this side of the van. So it's not bad. Um, so, coming into the load. So, I'm gonna clear up now while Mark <coughs> moans. Good morning, everybody. Thought you could join me on seeing how this has come out. So this is the first coat. We knew that there's going to be patchy one because we were doing this in the pitch black. Um, <clears throat> but also, if you remember, I said yesterday we were trying the roller and the roller effect really didn't work. It bubbled all up. But actually, that's not too bad for the first coat. It will all have to be... Right, let's get a close-up. So you can see it's all bubbly here. So this is still a little bit more of where the roller was. And this is the paintbrush. So you can see it's smoother. But all of this is going to have to be sanded back anyway. <clears throat> Before we do the second coat. And then that will get rid of things like this. Um, this was a 4 to 1 ratio which we would do again, especially for the other, for the first coat, and then probably move to a five to one. Right, so this is a good example of the roller. Can you see how bubbly that is? Um, and then this paintbrush. So important to have the right tools. Okay, so you're joining me inside the van. So I just had a shower, obviously checked the van with you guys. And I'm having, there we go. Um, so <laughs> I've got chunking right next to me and sandpaper. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, it was a little bit noisy outside. There's people in the park super early this morning. Um, but just wanted to go through that. Yeah, I think it's important to have the right tools. So we're going to try getting some foam rollers today, um, and seeing what a difference that makes. Um, having the paintbrush definitely made a difference um, in comparison to the roller that we were using yesterday. In terms of size, the roller that we were using is a 4 inch. I still think that that's probably the best size to get. Hang on just a minute, sweetie. Um, I still think that that's probably the best size to get. Um, a 4 to 1 ratio is still quite runny, but it did give it enough time for you to be able to continue to work the paint without working it too much. Good morning. Morning. Um, and so I think that that's quite important. However, for subsequent quotes, I think that's fine for the first one. For subsequent quotes, I'm going to try a five to one. Um, see how that goes. Uh, it's all a bit of an experimentation. I think we have chosen the right color. I will put the it, the color on the description. Um, we've also chosen a satin finish, which is a more of a matte finish than a gloss finish. I don't know what the difference would be in the workability of the gloss paint in comparison to the satin because I've never worked with it, never worked with this type of paint either. One of the reasons we chose to do the Rust-Oleum as opposed to using military paint which is another um, popular choice when it comes to painting vans is just purely because of the colour choice um, and also, I know sweetie, um, and also that the Rust-Oleum is um, a primer 
and your paint all in one and also it's a rust protection i'm not sure about the military paint because i didn't really look into it that much so you would need to do your own comparison to find out what works better for you and the choices that you want to make for your van the weather is definitely getting cooler every time i'm coming into the van in the mornings and especially in the evenings it's a lot cooler now so um i think we want to try and get a few more of the things with regards to um the finishing details sorted out at the moment it's challenging to work out what our next priority will be because we are battling finances versus practicality of what we really need to do next and also the reason why we're doing the painting right now as i mentioned before is because of course the weather's going to turn and it will be a lot more colder wet more, a lot more unpredictable which is why the painting is done being done now I'm gonna enjoy my coffee. Okie dokie, so we are back to the van and I picked up foam rollers. I've also picked up um, these ones. We're gonna try them and see what they're like, um, which is on this one here. And I've also picked up this. Not 100% sure if it's gonna work, but thought we'd give it a try anyway. Before I do any of these though, I need to sand down the van. And that is sanding down this coat here. Let me now that we've got a bit more sunshine. So see if I can try and get a close up. Um, so I'm gonna sand all of this down. Mark is currently around this side of the van. Um, and he is sanding down the original paint. So his sandpaper is coarser than mine. I'm gonna be using, I think it's 320. Yeah, so I'm going to use 320 to sand in between coats and see what that's like. I'm going to try and set up the camera, but I don't have a great angle for this bit here, unfortunately. Oh look, he's already put it on a block for me. How cool is that? Bless him. So that's a 320. Um, so there might not be a huge amount of videoing on this part. It might have to be for down the sides here, we'll see. We took a well-earned break and some quality time with the girls by going over to Dartmouth to watch the fireworks for Dartmouth Regatta. Join us again in week 7 where we show you, well, what can only be described as the disaster as far as the rest of the paint job goes and also what we do about it. Please do like and subscribe, it means a huge amount to us and please also do leave us your comments, we love to hear them and we definitely love all of those little bits of advice that you share with us too. So, take care, see you next time.